Hello lovelies and welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm going to be doing my makeup while talking about Christina Ricci and her favorite beauty products. So I started watching the TV show Yellow Jackets a few weeks ago and I'm really into it now and I kind of forgot about Christina Ricci. Um, I used to be a huge fan of hers in the 90s. My One of my favorite movies when I was a kid was Now and Then. I was obsessed with that movie and I would watch it like, I don't know, once a month at least in the 90s. So I am a fan of hers and I just love, she kind of has like a vintage vibe to her in some ways. I just love her makeup and I think she looks really good. So I was really curious to find out which beauty products she used. And I'm also following her on Instagram. It looks like she just had a baby as well. And before we jump into her beauty products, let's talk a little bit about Christina Ricci. And recently I watched the movie Buffalo 66 and it's an awesome movie. I think it's from 1998 and I love her vintage makeup in that movie. She has this crazy blue eyeshadow and I just love it. And I kind of love the 1960s look she's going for in the movie. It's weird. The movie has like a combination of a 1960s feel as well as 1990s. I just love her style in that movie. And I think she did a great job. It's a really interesting movie. I can't believe I've never heard of it, but when I was Googling photos of Christina Ricci, because I always like to print out my photos for my videos, I stumbled upon that photo of her up close of her eyeshadow, and I was like, that's a really cool look. So I'm gonna play around with some blue colors today. And just a short disclaimer, I'm not a makeup artist in any way. I just love makeup, and I find it very relaxing doing my makeup, and I always do my makeup before I film my videos, so I thought, why not just do my makeup while I talk to you guys? So by the time Christina Ricci was 27, she had already been featured in over 40 films. So the former child star made her debut in 1990 with three standout roles. The first one was in the TV series Help, opposite living superstar Cher from Mermaids, and as a cute tot in Cher's accompanying music video for Earworm, the Shoop 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 song. Ricci has established her worth as an actor in a wide range of parts in the decades since her childhood acting days. From playing Wednesday Addams to befriending a ghost in Casper before moving into the horror genre in Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. She's done it all on TV and films, and she's even dabbled in producing with credits on shows like the Lizzie Borden Chronicles. And it's interesting because I feel like I almost grew up alongside Christina Ricci. She's a little bit older than me, but I really found her relatable in the 90s watching all of her movies. And I think she fits really into Tim Burton characters because she does have an interesting look. I think she's very unique and she has definitely those like very large eyes. And she began her career as a child actor and she told People Magazine in 2018 that she doesn't regret starting so young. She says, I've had some fantastic adventures and have always loved working. She said her favorite role was working on The Addams Family and the sequel Addams Family Values alongside Angelica Houston. She says those were the glory days for me as a 10 and 12 year old. And she said there were wonderful movies to be on and I love those movies too. I think she did a great job in those ones. She says similarly working on Cher's first film on Mermaids was also a dream come true for her. She says Cher was so open and generous and she thought it was a great experience. I think that'd be crazy working with Cher obviously anyways but let alone as a kid although christina ricci was glad for her early start she was very public with her adolescence so she basically grew up on film and she definitely had that gothic quality to her which actually complemented her on-screen appearances and i think that's why i like her she definitely has that unique look and i was looking at old photos of her in the 90s and she definitely had that gothic quality to her and she's actually very grateful because a lot of people grow up as a child star, but they end up not working as they get older. Either their like look changes and they're just not as cute as when they're younger, or they just can't handle it. And they can't handle the industry. And then they either like end up taking too many drugs or just, it just doesn't work out for them. There's been so many child stars who either had to take a break or just got too involved in the Hollywood scene. But as she got older, a lot of roles were still handed to her and she says her family keeps her grounded she says even as things plummeted and money became a less of an issue the actors credits them along with frequent treatment for keeping her anchored she says as a result i thought it was hysterical when i finally came into money the casper star said which i believe is not the kind of mentality you should have she said it was impossible for her to take it seriously 
So Christina Ricci ended up getting married in 2013 and divorced in 2020. And she actually got a restraining order from her first spouse, James Hedgerden. And he was prohibited from seeing her and her son, Freddie, who was born in 2014. And he was required to stay at least 100 yards away from her. Christina's suit claims that she was subjected to serious physical and emotional abuse, which began as soon as she became pregnant and it continued in front of their kid. She said she found herself trapped in the house with a man who had physically and emotionally mistreated her and understood that I wanted to terminate the marriage. And she says, while COVID-19 outbreak worsened, all of her ex's assertions were denied. And besides lighting up the screen, Christina Ricci has become a beauty symbol, both for some of her gothic qualities in Wednesday Adams with the pale snow white skin, for women smitten by her cute yet edgy attractiveness, and in 2013, she even teamed up with Makeup Forever to develop her own limited edition beauty bag, which she described as hard rock meets couture. She says, I got to build something that genuinely holds everything I need on the go. So I was curious to find out which type of cosmetics Christina Ricci uses and kind of her go-to ones, because she has really good skin. And I found her old Instagram post from 2017, as well as some newer articles. And these are some of her must-have beauty items. And she referred them to as her little soldiers. And she definitely has a high-end taste for a lot of these products. I was a little bit surprised. Some of them are quite expensive. So the first product that she likes is Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. This one's $48, so it's not too bad. And you can get it at Sephora. So that's kind of like a mid-price point. At least it's attainable. I've always wanted to try their um retinol serum because i've heard that one's supposed to be really good and she also likes this face cream and it's a french one excuse my pronunciation it's claire de pure la creme and this one is 550 dollars online and she also loves the repair oil which is another 168 dollars and you can get these ones from nordstrom i bet they're really good but that's insane for a cream but i guess if you can afford it why not and she also loves joanna vargas skincare products and she also uses the Clade de Pure Protect Sunscreen at SPF 15. That's 135 online. She says these are her go-to skincare products. And she claims to have a self-obsessed passion for makeup. She says she's obsessed with the makeup and it's kind of her own going joke. And she says for her eyelids, she loves Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow. She also loves Tom Ford's Smoky Browns. And she also loves Claire de Pure Concealer, which is $73 online. She also suggests getting eight hours of sleep a night. She says a lot of famous people end up going by on very little sleep, even like Betty White, who notoriously said she only got like four or five hours a night, which sometimes I wish I would be able to do that, but I find that I need at least seven or eight hours of sleep. Some days I can do get five hours of sleep and that's fine, but then I always have to play catch up. And she says a key beauty technique I found is try to get at least eight hours of sleep every night. And she says when she's not working, she gets 10 hours of sleep a night, which is crazy. And she says that sleeping for 10 hours is very beneficial. I mean, I guess I can be guilty of that. I say so. usually one day a week, I'll have a catch up day where I'll sleep at least maybe nine hours, but it really depends. Um, but it is nice to have one of those days where you just don't set any alarms and you just sleep in until ever late you want to. And then I do like that. Um, I always feel refreshed and it is like a treat being able to do that. And she says that she thinks it's an anti-aging secret. And she says that her mom is 70 and sleeps 10 hours a day and she still looks great. I swear that my dad sleeps a lot too. And he's in his early seventies. And I always thought that like older people end up getting up at the crack of dawn, but he, I think he sleeps until 10. So maybe there's something to that. I think it's just important if you can and have the time is to at least have like one or two days a week where you're getting enough rest. I think that's important. And when it comes to her eyebrows, she says she advises against over plucking, but I think in the early 2000s and obviously in 90s, the trend was to have the overplucked eyebrows and she was probably guilty of doing that in the 90s as well like a lot of people i remember seeing old photos of myself in the late 90s and early 2000s and i was like shocked at how ridiculous my eyebrows looked 
Um, I'm lucky that mine ended up growing back because I know a lot of people ended up having to do microblading. So I don't know why mine seemed to grow back. I'm happy about that because I don't even put anything on my eyebrows. But yeah, I think that was just like a common thing and it can be hard if you over pluck it. So I was happy that mine grew back. And she also says it's important to like keep an eye on your own body and drink lots of water and just make sure you take care of your skin, washing it and cleansing it and just general upkeep. And she says to drink a lot of water, which is also important. I feel like I do that a lot too. I am obsessed with drinking water. I probably almost drink too much water, um, but I think once you get used to drinking water and then if you kind of get dependent on it and you want to drink more, and yeah, I definitely love drinking water. I think it's a good beauty habit to get into. I know a lot of other movie stars had suggested drinking a lot of water. So I think it's definitely something to keep in mind. But yeah, let me know if you've watched the new show Yellow Jackets. I've been loving it. I think there's only a, maybe the season finale is probably already out. So I have to watch it. But I, I really want to dive into watching some of her older movies too. That's how I randomly stumbled upon the Buffalo 66, which is a great movie and if you're a football fan it is good too because it features the buffalo bills and unfortunately they did tragically lose recently so i'm sorry if you're a buffalo bills fan so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and let me know which christina ricci movie is your favorite all right i'll see you guys again soon bye